first in our backup process, we're going to take care of backing up the file system. So we have our site entirely created. It's a site that is comprised of one single article. If we go to our cPanel environment, we can go to the file manager to view our file system. We're going to go to web root. Web root is where the files are located that comprise our site. Typically on most uh, web root folder is called public underscore HTML. We can go up one level and we can find some other directories and other files that are on our server and serve various purposes. But our website itself is what is contained in this public HTML folder. Everything right here. These are the files and directories that we need to save somewhere that we need to back up in order to have a backup of our website. Doing this is pretty straightforward. Let's go back one level once again so that we can view the public HTML folder. We'll select it and let's compress that folder. You want to choose whatever format works best with your operating system. Sometimes on Windows, uh, just plain old zip is the way to go. I'm on Mac OS X and uh, gzipped tar works just fine there. So that's what I'm going to choose. And you'll notice it's going to put this in a folder or a compressed file in your home directory, which is where the public HTML directories is located. And it's going to call this compressed file public HTML.tar.gz or .zip or whatever you choose. We'll click compress files. And this might take just a second. And here it gives us the compression results. It gives, tells us everything that it compressed, everything that's now contained in this tar.gz package. We will close that. Let's reload this page. And if we scroll down a bit, we see public underscore HTML dot tar dot GZ. If you're connecting to your file system through an FTP client rather than cPanel, you can just simply download all the files as they are without compressing them. That will work just fine, although it'll take up a little bit more space on your hard drive. Or you can go to cPanel and compress it just how we did. And then if you prefer, you can connect via FTP and just download this tar.gz file. But you don't have to do that. If you want to just stick with cPanel, that's perfectly fine. Once we've compressed this, we simply will download it. Wherever you choose to store these backups of your site, I always recommend storing them within a subfolder with today's date. For me, the date is December 14th of 2015. When you're doing these, it's best to start with the year due to the way that most operating systems sort folders, and then month, and then day. You start broad and get more granular as you go. So we'll create a new folder named in this fashion. And then in that folder, we'll go ahead and save our file. This is so that when we have multiple backups, we don't start overwriting them because you want to maintain multiple backups at different points in time. And it also just keeps them organized so we can tell what is from what point in time. So now we have downloaded our website. If we go back to our own operating system, I just put mine on the desktop. That's not the best place to keep this, but I just put it here because it's easy to see. Here's the folder we created. Here's the tar.gz file we created. If we go ahead and extract this, it will give us our full file system, which is right here. Here's Drupal's core directory. Here are our files. Our dot files or hidden files are here. They're just hidden from view right now. Here's our sites directory. Here's everything on the file system that can that our site consists of. We can also find the ninja image even. If we go to sites, default, files, the year and month that we uploaded that file, you'll find whatever image you used on your site. And that's all it takes. Now we have backed up the file system and all we have left to do is back up the database.